All right, all right. Back to work. Break time is over. Boy, another great day comes to an end. Hope you guys made some money out there today. Boy, the buyers got some fantastic entries this morning, but the sellers were relentless, kept on holding this market back. But I'll tell you, though, the bears better be careful because this one really important, very simple clue on the 60-minute chart that tells us if these bears, if they run out of bullets, there could be a big short squeeze coming on Thursday. I want to talk about that tonight. I got some great trades to capitalize on a potential short squeeze. And as always, I'm going to make sure you have a good roadmap to make some money in the squeeze as well. We'll cover all my favorite trades in the video here tonight. Before we jump in, though, and get the party going tonight, make sure you subscribe to our channel. That way you don't miss tomorrow night's video. And if you like these lessons, if you enjoy these videos, do me a favor here tonight, will you? Hit that, hit that like button for me and give me a shout out. Give me a holler. Say hi down in the comment section below. All kidding aside, though, thank you so much for tuning in supporting the channel tonight but not for the intro thursday yeah thursday's not going to trade itself and we have a bunch of great trades setting up for what could be another great day tomorrow in our morning trade room now starting off here first on the 60 minute time frames i like to use the 60 minute charts to plan my trades for the following day and then later on in the video tonight we'll drill down to our tick charts remember tick charts will help us find the perfect entry timing for tomorrow what are the 60 minute time frames tell us right now on the s p and the nasdaq well we're still bullish into ranges bullish into ranges and the buyers are trying to rotate up off of that range low rotate up off of that range low like i said earlier the buyers got a bunch of really nice bear traps and failure entries this morning but the sellers right the sellers kept in and holding them back right the bears kept in kept, kept defending them but are you seeing the 60 minute chart right now look at the wicks on the s p right now look at the wicks at the bottom of these candles look at that nasdaq look at those big wicks at the bottom on the 60 minute on the nasdaq those big wicks tell an important story and although the sellers were did a very good job at holding back the buyers they kept on coming here today you gotta think a bunch of stops are sitting above these highs if we can knock those stops out here some very nice squeeze potential going into thursday so very excited for tomorrow's trading session now before we jump into the tick charts though and talk about ways to capitalize on the potential short squeeze for tomorrow let's check the calendar for tomorrow because there's a bunch going on tomorrow that you may not be aware of now the obvious stuff is the ppi report and the retail sales number tomorrow morning the ppi number being another inflation number it's kind of the little brother or the cousin i guess you would say of the cpi number and the retail sales right will definitely be on our radar tomorrow now we also have two things we don't exactly know when will happen tomorrow but we're watching them closely right now we're hearing rumors about a the united auto workers uh threatening to strike by midnight uh tomorrow night Night. the strike will go into effect on Friday morning they've got some pretty hefty demands at the UAW and that's definitely something that could be bubbling in the background we're also supposed to hear from President Biden tomorrow regarding some major economic announcement they haven't given us much information on that but those are two very important known unknowns big question marks for tomorrow the big one in my eyes is this auto strike that appears to be the one lingering factor so we'll be watching that closely tomorrow hopefully that doesn't steal our thunder for those short squeezes uh here for tomorrow but those are the three things i'm watching right now we know when the ppi and the retail sales are coming out the others will be kind of up in the air tomorrow and we'll keep track of that tomorrow in our trade room now back to our charts it's good to know when the news is coming out, but remember, the money is made on the charts. Let's now go over my favorite trades here on the S&P and the NASDAQ here for tomorrow. Why don't we start first on the E-mini and the SPY, and we'll wrap tonight up here, of course, on the NASDAQ and the triple Qs. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we have a bullish market right now into a trading range, bullish market into a trading range. 
the buyers are trying to rotate off that low and run back up into that range overhead. Buyers got lots of good entries today. Sellers did a great job at holding back the tide. But again, you, you can see what I'm talking about. Those wicks on the 60-minute, you got to think there are a bunch of stops that would love to get squeezed and a potential rotation going higher up into, at the very least, up into taking out some of these big highs overhead and ideally up into that range. Again, I think that auto worker strike is the only variable right now that may put a a wet towel that tomorrow. So we'll keep an eye on that. Let's drill down now to our tick charts, though, and let's see what's setting up here on the tick charts because there are really two very important clues on the tick charts. This is a 7,000 tick chart, by the way, and that is the 21 EMA. That's the moving average on the chart if you're watching for the first time right now. Two important clues that'll make it easy for us to plan the best trades here for tomorrow. The first one is a bullish market into a trading range. Now, if you're a student of mine or if you're taking any of our free trading classes right now on the website, you know this. This is one of the, one of the most consistent uh, market structures or patterns we see. Whenever we have a bull market into a range, we know that buyers are buying support levels like the low of this channel. And their goal, of course, is going to be to rotate off the low. We call this rotation off the low. And ultimately, they're trying to take out a pendulum swing, right? Up around this point, that 45, 43 half. This is a very good look to trigger a short squeeze. A lot of times these rotations off the low can be very, very aggressive and really punch going higher. That's one very big part of our game plan here for tomorrow. Another part we have to keep in mind though is, is we do have major levels of resistance overhead. So although I will be looking for a move going higher, I will not shy away from some reversals off the high tomorrow because we've got weekly highs, right? Weekly highs well above us. So it would make perfect sense, get a nice little short-term squeeze going higher, and then the bears did a pretty good job holding it back. We may see some reversal patterns. I've got two, maybe three different ways to short that top if we get the right signal later on in the move here for tomorrow. So let's let's cover this stuff. As the market rotates higher, and I'm sure many of you guys know this because we talk about this a lot in our free trading classes, as we rotate off the low of this trading range, we know where the market wants to go, right? It wants to take out that high. It wants to finish up that pendulum swing. There is one particular pattern we look for, and those are called what? They're called traps. In this case, it's a bear trap. So as we're going higher, this one simple entry pattern I'm looking for on our faster time frames tomorrow morning in our trade room, and those are bear traps. Remember how bear traps work? It's a higher high in price and a trap below that low. Now, keep in mind, this could easily accelerate. We could easily keep going higher. And if we keep going higher, it's the same basic principle. Remember, higher high in price, trap comes in below that low. In the free trading classes, I talk about getting the proper signal can Candle, a strong green candle closing firmly above the moving average. So make sure you get the right signal on those bull traps as we go higher. Okay, that's that's the way we trade this as it rotates, as it goes higher. Another thing you want to keep in mind too is, and of course later on in the video, I will talk about how to short this thing back down off the high. And I'll also talk about if the squeeze really starts to pick up, how to know when to buy up there. Later on in the video tonight, we'll talk about when to buy it, right, as it goes higher and when to sell it. I'll give you guys an easy way to know whether you should buy up there or to sell up there. Now, what if we don't get that? What if we don't get that easy run? What if we pump up and roll over, right? What if it rolls over? Easy, easy game plan for tomorrow. Pay attention on this one. If we do end up rolling over, right, and retesting that low, this is where a double bottom reversal will come in handy. It's not a bear market. It's an overall bull market. And what you want to look for is, is what I call a failure into pullback combination. You guys learned this in the free trading course as well. I'm going to look for the bears to get trapped below the moving average. Let those sellers try a couple times. And when they do, at support, below a range, overall bull market, we're going to try to use their stops to fuel the run 
going higher, right? So if the market rolls over, I'm not going to sell down here. Do not make that mistake to short into support below a trading range in a bull market. But hopefully there will be some inexperienced traders who do take those shorts because then we can squeeze those stops for run going higher. Now, one of my favorite trades to follow up, I mentioned earlier, was the pullback combination. After we pull higher here right now, we then look for that pullback to continue. So think of this basic idea. We go back to retest the lows. We trap in the bears. We use a failure pattern, right? This is a two-try failure like I teach in the free trading course. And then as the market goes higher, I'm looking for pullbacks. My favorite out of, out of all of them would be the pullback incorporating that bear trap as I mentioned before, right? Higher, high in price and that trap going lower. Remember, I teach both of these patterns and I have probably hundreds of examples inside the free trading course, right? That failure and that trap pattern. If you haven't taken, by the way, those free classes yet and learned that failure into pullback combination, I'll put a link up there for you in the upper right-hand corner. Grab that link, take that free trading class because that's the strategy I teach in that video series. We'll teach you a simple, simple trick we use every morning to know exactly where the best winning trades are going to be each day. And most importantly, I'll teach you my four favorite entry patterns to help you start making money. Things like failures, traps, pullback combinations. If you're sick of missing the best trades each day, if you're taking too many losses, blowing too many accounts right now, stop doing it all on your own. Learn that roadmap in that free trading course. Grab that link. You're going to love that video series and that that roadmap will get you, it'll get you on the meat pretty quickly here. Also, too, if you can't grab the link up there, I'll put all the important links down in the description of the YouTube video just in case you can't get that pop-up that popped up there in the upper right-hand corner. Now, later on in the video, as we go deeper, I'm going to talk about as we go higher here. One more thing, though. What if something happens overnight? What if the market races lower? What if it races lower? What, what if we see a strong move going lower here. If we see a strong move going lower, we're going to be right back down around major lows with a range above us. Great spot to be a buyer once again. The challenge will be, if we were to race lower, is going to be momentum, right? How do you buy, how do you buy this if we're at support under a big range, but with a lot of momentum. Now, this this one easy pattern for that, it's called a crown reversal. We talked about the failure pattern a moment ago. It's just like the failure pattern, but now, now toss in a bear trap. Imagine now we're down to support. We're down to support. Lots of momentum for the bears. Horrible place to sell right? No way. I don't want to sell down there. Not at support, below a range. Overall, no way, right? Horrible place to sell. But if we do get some bears coming in and trying once, bears coming in and trying twice, this is what a crown reversal will look like. Now, remember, if we see a strong move down like this, the sellers are going to want to what? They're going to want to retest that low. So let them try a couple times. And if we get that nice juicy signal, notice how this is a failure pattern with a bear trap. Remember, higher high in price and that trap low, we call these crown reversals. It basically molds, it basically melts together and melts together a failure and a, and a trap set up. Anytime we see pop up, one try, two try, underneath prior swings, right? This is an example of one right there, right? So exact same pattern right at, at that low. And then think about it too, right? If we were to make a strong run down, if they were to pull back and actually retest that low again, we talked about this a moment ago, what do we do? We trap the rookies in with a one and a two try. We don't need a trap at this point because now that strong move down has already retested that low. The bears are already in this thing. They should be taking their profit at that low, but again, hopefully nobody tells the rookies tomorrow and they'll short into those lows. Again, think about where their stops are. Think about where their pain is. My first mentor in this business uh, almost 20 years ago or 15 years ago now would always say, 
trap in those sellers underneath the 21 moving average around support in a bull market, right? Overall bull market underneath the moving average, trap those bears in and put yourself in the shoes of those sellers. Where would they be in pain? Where would their stops be? And buy right into those stops. And again, if we start getting that punch going higher again, what's the best entry? You know this, traps, right? Will always be my favorite entry on the way back up into that range or into the big range here overhead. So a pretty simple game plan, right? Pretty simple game plan. As we rotate higher, we look for bear traps on the way up. And again, it could be at any point on the way higher. If we roll over and retest, we trap the bears in using a failure pattern into pullback combination. A lot of examples of that inside the free trading course. If it races lower, we have to respect all that momentum, use a crown reversal to trap in the bears and buy as low as you can. That way you're not getting pickpocketed with a head fake going higher. And if they do end up rolling back to retest that low, right, we don't sell that low, right? We let them take profit at that low. We trap the rookies in and we rinse and repeat failure into pullback combo goal is going back up into that trading range e pretty easy plan pretty easy plan in my eyes if you're a student of mine we do this pretty much every day uh, in our trade room at eight o'clock eastern time now let's get serious now about if we end up rolling higher how do you know how do you know as we go higher if i should buy up there for a, for a squeeze because i mean let's face it if if the buyers get what they want tomorrow they may take out these highs and really punch right they may really punch here for tomorrow the challenge though is i get those weekly highs up there right that's our big challenge let's now go to the nasdaq how do you know whether you want to buy it as it goes higher or whether you want to sell it as it goes higher over on the nasdaq right now let's go back to the 60 minute nasdaq the nasdaq is a pretty straightforward 60 minute chart right we get a bull market into that range that range is a magnet and we're trying to rotate right back up the bears got their breakout pullback we talked about this on monday this week if you recall we talked about that bull trap uh, earlier this week been a pretty easy game plan all week if you guys are watching the videos here this week and again right the bears took it lower and the buyers just kept on, right? Look at those wicks, right? So buyers, they're defending it. The bears did a great job uh, today and, uh, and, and on Monday, did a great job at defending it. But when you look at the wicks down here and you see how the end of the day, look at how the day ended today, right? Every time, right, the, went down, buyers bought it up. Went down, buyers bought it up. The bears did a pretty good job at keeping it from stretching its legs, right? But you can easily see the buyers are up to the challenge and they're trying to hold this thing right now. You have to think there's a lot of stops above these highs here, right? There's only so many bullets left in the gun here for the bears right now in an overall bull market. So on the NASDAQ right now, we kind of have what feels more like a, a trend, right? We have a kind of a bull Bull channel and the market rotating off the low to the high, low to the high, right? And um, as, as you guys learn in the free trading classes, trending markets love to go in threes. So one leg, two leg, and three leg. And what do we always say? The first leg is the measuring leg, first leg and third leg. It's all like, it's, it's like Elliott wave, right? Think about an Elliott wave, right? An Elliott wave sequence. An Elliott wave sequence goes wave one, two, three, four, five, right? Where the first leg, and I call it first leg, third leg. I know Elliott wave, it's five legs, right? I call it, I call it one. The middle one is oftentimes larger or oftentimes smaller, but the bottom line is, is the first leg and the third leg are usually very symmetrical. So there's our first leg right there, second leg right there. Again, that's not the big deal. The big deal right now is that third leg, right? That third leg gives us, and you'll know where it puts us, right? It puts us right back at those weekly highs here once again. So it definitely does feel like a trending market. I definitely wouldn't argue with anybody who said, nah, Joe, that's a bull move into a trading range bullish range rotate off the high rotate off the low and now trying to squeeze out those sellers and get those stops to get triggered and run this thing up into the measured move into the bullish targets up around these weekly highs not a lot changes here on the nasdaq as we go higher we're looking for what looking for bear traps higher high in price 
right? Trap below that, below that low. As we go higher, we're always looking for higher highs in price, traps below those lows. It's a very, very easy game plan. These are almost bulletproof trades whenever you're moving higher in a market like this. Again, if we end up rolling over and retesting that low, trap those bears in with a failure, failure into pullback combination, relatively straightforward. If it does race lower, right? If it races lower, all that momentum, use that crown reversal pattern. Okay, so we, we've talked about this already a little bit too much. I'm not going to bore you guys with repeating it once again. Now, now, as we go higher, the easiest way to tell whenever you want to buy this thing as it's going higher is going to be what we call a pop and grind channel. In my trade room, we're always saying anytime you see, anytime you see a pop and grind higher, what do you do? You draw a trembling off those highs, you bring it down to that low, you look left, find some prior swings, and you buy that first test, right? Anytime you see a pop, again, a pop up, it begins to grind and grind and grind. You can almost set your clock, right, to that pullback off that low. You can see one setting up right now for these buyers. So as we go higher, keep an eye on this. If we do get that squeeze and we start seeing that grind and grind and grind like that, what does that tell you? That tells you, that grind tells you that sellers are getting bounced out of their positions. If we get that pop and grind, again, like back here, we draw that trend line off the high. We then pin it down around that low. And what my favorite technique is, is I look left, I find those prior swings, and I simply wait for a pullback. And I try to get somewhere around those prior swings. Now, in the free trading classes, we learn about the two patterns that are most common around those lows, right? They're failures and their traps. Traps are my favorite. As you guys know, I like to get below prior swings, below prior swings, right, and buy below those. Could be a trap, like in this example. It could also get underneath the moving average, and once those bears try to short this thing underneath the 21 EMA, we can once again use their stops as fuel for that failure into pullback combination as we go higher, right? So any one of these entry patterns, and I know I'm simply drawing on the screen right now, but if you take that video course I've referred to many times already, you'll see real examples of what these patterns look like. I know a lot of you guys uh, have used those very successfully at this point. So it could be a trap, could be a failure, could be a pullback combo. And keep in mind too, remember markets are fractal, right? So remember how we said earlier, one leg, two leg, three leg, first leg is the measuring leg, third leg is usually symmetrical. How can we use that here? Well, think about this, first leg, right? Measuring leg, third leg is the target, right? See how that works? First leg is the pop-up, second leg is the grinder, right? Third leg is, the, right, is symmetrical to that first leg. Remember, the easiest way to make more money is to get better at letting your trades run. And one of the easiest ways to know to, to let your trades run is to know where the market wants to go. We're always talking about in our in our trade room, if you want to make more money, don't trade more often. Just get better at squeezing out more money out of the trades that you take. So if we do see it pop up and grind, it's a very easy giveaway right now of what's happening. We're squeezing the bears out, and everyone now is is gonna is, is gonna is gonna squirm here, right? And, and try to get that first pullback off the low um, of that channel. Now, how would you know you could sell this? As we pop up, how would you know to sell it? Well, remember back here we talked about that crown reversal? Remember that crown reversal pattern we did was we trapped the bears in and we used that bear trap, a two try failure. It's the same basic idea, it's the same pattern, it's just the short side of it. So as we go higher, again, think about this, we are an overall bull market right? Overall bull market. So I have to be careful trying to sell the top. I realize it's overhead resistance, but in a bull market, we need more than just resistance. We need to see signs of exhaustion and we need some sort of catalyst 
to run this thing back down again, right, ultimately. And to do that, we're going to use the buyers against themselves. So we all know better than buying high, right? At least we should. If we pull back and keep grinding, okay, that's the giveaway. But again, in this scenario, we pop up, we don't keep grinding, and now as we pull back, the buyers try to keep it going, but they fail. Now, in the video course I, I talked about earlier, we'll, we'll teach you guys about what's called the two-try rule. Okay, it's very simple. The buyers are going to try twice to keep this thing going. Buyers want to buy low, right? So once they pull back, they try to buy it once. If they go lower, they'll try to buy it again, right? Two try rule. Buyers try once, buyers try twice. Remember though, buyers want to buy low. So a lower low in price is necessary. Now in a bull market, we want to give the buyers the benefit of the doubt on this. So as they try to go higher, I'm looking for a bull trap right above that high. Lower low in price, trap high. Now remember, the signal on these reversals is very important. A strong, convincing close below that 21 moving average, that is your crown reversal. Now, it's a very common question. Why not simply wait for it to pop up, buyers once, buyers twice? Why not simply sell right there, right? Why not sell right there? Because that oftentimes is a bear trap. Why? Well, we're an overall bull market. It's not difficult to think. There could be a channel coming off that high, off that low, and right when you get in short, you're oftentimes walking right into a bear trap, okay? So that's the reason why a crown reversal is so important when you're going against that trend because as we pull back, buyers try once, buyers try twice. Again, if I sell down here, right, if I sell down there, Again, I'm potentially walking into a trap, right? If I sell right there, okay? Also to my risk and my reward is horrible. But if I can get that bull trap off the high, right? If I can get in now, if I can get in up here now with a good signal, right? Closing now below that moving average. Now, if we do have a channel coming down, now I've already, right? I'm already well in the green on that trade. Makes sense, right? That's the way you protect yourself, at least in my experience. That's the way I protect myself against that bear trap. This is why crown reversals are so valuable. They're a little more complicated, but they're the only way to do it, in, in my opinion, right? Other, other than gambling on the short back down again, right? If we do get a bear trap on that, if it does end up squaring, squeezing back up. You've already made your first target, right? You've already got your profit out of it. Stop moves down to point of entry. So you're protected against that potential trap and that run higher. We go up, buyers once, buyers twice, that bull trap going higher, right, and gone, right? Uh, it's almost the same exact idea, right? We go down, right? The bears are trying, the bears are trying. We get underneath a prior swing. No surprise that buyers are waiting right there, right? That's a, ultimately a crown reversal pattern. It's a bear trap below that low. I know it's more complicated, but I, I think you give some practice and do it with me to trade them for a few weeks. You'll get pretty good at that. Also, too, if we run up, pull back and retest of that high, remember now the buyers are already in, right? Most buyers are, are gonna take their profit where? At, at, for the most part, at that high. At this point now, if they can't keep it going and the rookies try a couple times, you can get more aggressive on that type of two try failure pattern right? That's a double top reversal. But in this scenario, the buyers have already committed, right? They're, they've already spent their bullets, if you will. At that point now, we assume those buyers are taking profit at that high, at least good, a good chunk of it, at least half of it, or three quarters of the profit off. Horrible place to be buying, right? Those are rookies buying. Right? Those, those, are, those are rookies buying up there, right? Professionals buy low, rookies buy high. We can, we can sell that to try failure, back down into that trading range after that retest of that of that high, right? Same thing down here. We run lower. It's a crown reversal to buy as low as we can. If it rolls over and retests that low, mission accomplished. Moving average comes in, trap the bears in, buy back up from there. Same principle, same, same thing, just flipped off on its side uh, in a bullish environment on the bottom. All right, guys? So that's how you know whether you want to buy it. Does it 
pop and grind going higher, or does it rush up and buyers struggle for that reversal back down again? All right, we've covered a lot of details here on this video. Now the big question is, is what do retail sales and PPI number tomorrow? Will this, will this auto worker strike? Will it start to snowball? They've got some pretty lofty demands. It's looking like, what, a 40% rate hike? And they're beating their chest at the UAW right now, talking about some very creative, targeted strikes. It's like a war zone in the auto industry right now. So that is one thing I'm watching for tomorrow, and we'll see if Sleepy Joe can make the markets move tomorrow with his quote-unquote major economic announcement. Hopefully he ho hopefully doesn't fall asleep at the microphone. All kidding aside, though, all kidding aside, though, a fantastic day today. Uh, tomorrow, though, 8 o'clock Eastern time in our trade room. You know the markets will throw some curveballs at us around that news tomorrow. So be there with me, 8 o'clock Eastern time in the members' trade room. I'll put all the important links down in the description of the YouTube video. I would definitely recommend, though, start with the free classes first, and that'll get you warmed up for us in the morning trade room as a member. If you have any questions, if you need help getting access to our video classes, please don't be afraid to call the office or use live chat. We are always here. Uh, Megan and I are always here and easy to talk to if you guys have any questions along the way. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap things up tonight. Fantastic week so far. Let's keep the party going tomorrow. If we don't see you tomorrow morning in the members' trade room, we'll come back tomorrow night. Oh, we will. And get ready for uh, what we got, Quad Witching Friday on Friday morning. We'll talk more tomorrow night. In the meantime, be well, be nice to each other, will ya? And be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.